This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, and so if you want to indirectly support the channel while also buying or selling cards for your own matches, your own tournaments, your own duels, your own purposes, your own needs, then definitely check out their site and see what they have to offer you. I'm a big fan of how they do business, and their pricing and shipping from what I've seen and experienced thus far are both top notch. So definitely check out their site, which is linked in the description, and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile video, and this time it is going to be a video type that I have not done in a really long time, and that is deck building on a budget, or building on budget, rather. And I really wanted to do this because we are entering a new era of Yu-Gi-Oh! because of these little motherfuckers, these little blue cards that exist now. The Link Strike starter deck has come out, and it ushers in a new era of Yu-Gi-Oh! where we're summoning Link monsters now if we want to extensively extra deck spam. Now, what we have in this starter deck is a ton, ton of good cards. It is a very comprehensive starter deck in terms of you can buy this and you get tons of good cards out of it. And you could buy three of these and really actually put together a 40 card main and a 9 card extra deck that actually has some cohesive strategy to it. And you can actually build a few different types of decks out of this starter deck. It's a very, very comprehensive starter deck. So I definitely wanted to take three of those starter decks and make them into a $30 budget deck for any of you that are playing in a less competitive scene, like a less competitive locals, or you just play with your friends or whatever, you have limited cards, limited funds, whatever you may, whatever the case may be, if you just want to learn how to link summon, any of that sort of nonsense, this is definitely something for you. It's it's a combo based deck, it does have some elements of beatdown in it, and that's what I think is so hilarious about the starter deck, is that you can build literally two completely separate types of deck out of the starter deck. You have enough cards in it to make a strong beatdown deck that doesn't care about link summoning, but then you also have enough cards to make a good combo deck that actually effectively tries to link summon as often as possible to gain like advantage and things of that sort. So that's that's it's kind of cool. This struck this like starter deck is incredible in terms of the cards that it gives you, but the 40 card main deck of what I've built out of these three starter decks is as follows. It starts with three copies of Link Slayer. This card is arguably one of the most important, if not the most important, monster in your main deck because of what it does. Essentially, when you're playing with a budget option deck, consistency is really handicapped against you because you're not spending a lot of money on an archetype that was built and designed and functions in a way that it works together where every card accesses every other card, all that sort of stuff. It's definitely one of those things where you have to pick what you have access to, and those things can clump together in the form of you having a lot of normal summons in your hand that you can't summon every turn, having less options per turn because you have a bunch of normal summons that you can't put onto the field, essentially, and then also having cards that just are bad against matchups or are just clumping your hand in general. And Link, Spa and Link Slayer just fulfills both those uh, problems, and uh, he takes them and sort of alleviates them a bit because he's a special summon from your hand if you control no monsters, and he's 2,000, so he's a rather big like beater. He allows you to combo off by special summoning him and doing things with it. But also he turns dead cards in your hand into forms of backer removal via its effect of once per turn you can discard up to two cards from your hand to destroy that many spells and traps on the field. So it allows you to play into back row essentially and turning the worst cards that you weren't playing out of your hand into actual advantage yielding cards essentially because you'll be able to deal with back row in some sort of essence. So it's definitely a staple three of if you're building a deck out of the structure decks. But next monster is another incredibly important one, and that is three copies of Draconet and three copies of Bitron. Now Draconet is probably the best normal summon in this deck, hands down. Because what it does is a similar function to Link Slayer in the terms of it starts allowing your hands to flow a lot more freely. You don't really have clumpy hands with this deck nearly as much as you would if you were playing a very basic normal summon beatdown strategy and that's what I tried to build this deck around was I didn't want to have as many dead cards in my hand as other people's decks uh, in terms of what they're doing with their budget options and Draconet alleviates that because Draconet by itself it, with, the, with the existence of Link Spider that we got in this starter deck it allows you to open with Draconet and any vanilla monster either the Bitron or any other vanilla monster that is in your deck like Mystery Shell Dragon which we'll get to later and it allows you to summon Draconet, summon a Bitron out of your deck, Bitron becomes a Link Spider, and then Link Spider lets you special that normal monster out of your hand to its Link Arrow, essentially alleviating the problem that you had in your hand of clumping normal summons, because if you have some normal monsters lingering in your hand and you have access to a Draconet play, then what you can do is you can just start getting those monsters out of your hand. It basically turns what would have been a normal summon that you couldn't summon that turn in favor of a different option into you can summon it as well. So. 
it's a fantastic little uh, little play that you have access to. And you can also just go into Link Spider just by drawing Bitron. So like, it allows you to draw Bitron and like multiple normals, and you can do Link Spider plays. So that's that's cool as well. But I'm playing another set of Vanillas. Uh, this time, Mystery Shell Dragon. You know, the dragon that's a worm. That one. It's a 2,000 beater, so it's just a generic like beatdown esque monster. But because it is a normal monster, it works in conjunction with your Draco Net play, like I just previously described, as well as you can open it with Bitron. And normally, if you just open Bitron, it's not really that threatening. It's not really that like impactful, but if you open Bitron plus this, you can summon Bitron, make Link Spider, special this out of your hand, and then all of a sudden, instead of having a dead Bitron in your hand and just normal summoning this card, you now have a Link Spider on the board and this card, so it was able to get both of your cards out of your hand and commit to your board presence a little bit better and more effectively. So I prefer to run this card. I don't really like the Galaxy Serpent uh, because we're not playing any synchros, so there's really no point in playing Galaxy Serpent over something like Bitron, especially since Draco Net summons in defense position anyway, and sometimes you want to stop uh, instead of making Link Spider, uh, but like there's 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 a lot of things that could be done to change this deck up if you wanted to add cards to it, like adding Galaxy Serpent in as a tuner. Uh, but this is just the other vanilla, and this is like the other like beater that I really just wanted to play. Didn't really want to play Barbaros uh, because it's a conflicting normal summon. Uh, but, so carrying on, we have more cards that just let you bypass normal summons and try to combo off. This one is Photon Thrasher. It was between Cyber Dragon or Photon Thrasher for this slot, and I just figured that Photon Thrasher was a little bit more impactful in terms of it allows you to go first and do things, whereas Cyber Dragon, if you go first and you have Cyber Dragon plus Draco Net in your hand, you're going to start committing to your board, um, and then you're not going to be able to like special the Cyber Dragon unless your opponent clears your board, which is meaning it's essentially a card that's good when you're playing from behind, whereas Photon Thrasher is a card that you can special. Of course, you can't attack if you control other monsters other than it, but it is a beater on its own, so it's it's just one of those cards that fulfills the same sort of niche of like making this sort of a beatdown deck as well, but also it allows you to combo off with it, and again, it bypasses the normal summon problem of having clumping normal summons in your hand. And then, another card that goes towards the conflicting normal summon problem is two copies of Marauding Captain. I didn't want to play three because three clumps. Uh, if you were able to normal summon Marauding Captain, and then normal summon the other Marauding Captain in your hand, and then normal summon the other monster, then maybe three would be alright. But this special summons the monster from your hand, so it doesn't work very well with Draco Net, um, it only works very well with like itself or with cards like Bitron and Mystery Shell Dragon that are in your hand. It's just a card that helps alleviate those sorts of things. It also works really well with Sangin and uh, Ram Clouder, but so it works with a lot of the deck. But I just you never want to open with multiples of it, so that is why it is at two in this slot. But then another two of Ram Clouder again. This is just another card that I didn't want conflicting like amounts of like high amounts of normal summons in my hand. Uh, so even though this card is actually amazing in terms of you can just summon this and tribute it to bring back a Cyburst from your grave, like a dead Decode Talker, or a dead Link Spider, or a dead Honeybot. Um, like, it's just, it's it's great for what it does, but it just doesn't seem like 3 of status in a deck like this when you're already fighting against consistency and normal summons being cloggy in your hand. Like, we, you don't want that to be the thing that kills you um, in the long run, because you don't want your deck to basically be not operating optimally. But this does function very well with the other cards in the deck, like Marauding Captain. You can go Marauding Captain, summon this from hand with your Marauding Captain, and then tribute the Marauding Captain to bring back something, and then you just have a Ram Clouder continuously floating on the board to bring back cards that have died in terms of your Link Monsters and all that sort of stuff. So it's actually a really cool uh, a really cool option for the deck, but again, just not a three of. Same thing with Sangin. Sangin is sort of a slower to start card, unless you open it with Photon Thrasher or Marauding Captain. Uh, because if you open it with Photon Thrasher or Marauding Captain, you're just going to go ahead and commit to, like, a Honeybot play. Uh, and then when you're doing that, then you're going to be using the Sangin to search for either your Draco Net for next turn, or Effect Veiler to be a defensive card. So it, it was a card I wanted to include it because it gives you, like, advantage when you Link Summon, and there's very few cards in this deck that really do that, other than, like, Draco Net, which gives you the advantage up front. And this is one of those cards that gives you advantage after you utilize it, so, like, using it... Uh, to Link Summon just seems pretty free because it just gets you access into a bunch of like good things in your deck like your Draco Nets, your Marauding Captains, your Effect Veilers. It it gets you to a lot of good cards that actually like help meld your hand into a better situation uh, for the following turns to come. So it was, it was sort of an auto-inclusion, but again, didn't want it to clump at three. And then the last two monsters in the deck, rounding it out to 22 monsters, are two copies of Effect Veiler. It's not amazing in the format in the terms of the competitive scene, but again, if you're playing a deck like this, chances are you're either new to the game and you want to experiment with things, you're looking for a budget option, or you're playing in a less competitive setting. And in less competitive settings, Effect Veiler is actually usually just like the king of hand traps because like it just 
it handles such a broad scope of things that other cards like Ghost Ash and Ghost Ogre and Maxi can't really handle. And the fact that it's searchable in this deck, I really just wanted a form of searchable defense off of Sanyan. Um, and Valor being a hand trap that they're providing for you in the deck is definitely something that I wanted to include. But that is 22 monsters. And for spells, we have two copies of Dark Hole. They included board wipes in the starter deck, so thank Christ. We get to abuse a bunch of really strong, powerful spell cards. Uh, two copies of Forbidden Lance. This card can be used to force your plays through um, in like against uh, against less than optimal traps, but also it can be used as a battle tactic. Uh, two copies of Mystical Space Typhoon for just board removal in terms of back row uh, that you just don't want to be dealing with. You don't want to be throwing your cards into back row. And then Book of Moon because this is a great offensive and defensive card. It's arguably the best minus one in the game because you can utilize it going first as a set trap, essentially. You can utilize it going second by booking a problematic monster. The problem is you can't use it on link monsters, but like that's probably not going to come up too often in the settings where you're going to be playing this deck. But So that was the spells. Not very many of them because the deck doesn't have that many powerful spells that you can utilize, but does have a ton of really, really good traps. And we're going to start off with three Mirror Force just because the deck gave it to us. So we're going to play cards like this that protect your board. So essentially you're playing five board wipes uh, with the Mirror Forces, the Dark Holes, and actually six because there's a Torrential in this deck. Uh, which is right here. Actually, it's the next card. Uh, so we'll just group these all together. Uh, but the, the mirror forces, the torrentials, and the dark holes allow you to play this deck in sort of a higher competitive scene than you would normally be able to play budget decks of just like putting a structure deck together because of the fact that these cards are always going to be really, really good. Whether right now in the competitive scene, these cards are amazing. And even in non competitive scenes, these cards have always been amazing. So, like, Depending on where you're playing this deck and for what purpose you need it for, it's going to be something that works to your liking. But then, for the rest of the traps, we have staple cards like Bottomless and Compulse. Uh, two copies of Fiendish Chain just to be additional like effect negation. Uh, if we had another decent trap in place of this, probably wouldn't play it. But the only other traps in the deck are Dark Bribe, essentially, that I didn't use. Um, so, I mean, like this is I just wanted more cards that stop my opponent from like trying to do things. Uh, but like these cards, this card is typically like pretty weak in like the competitive format. But again, shouldn't be trying to play this deck in a competitive scene, or at least a highly competitive one. But I mean, you could try. You could see where that gets you. But then the last three cards in the deck are some recovery options in the form of two Call the Haunted and one Jar of Avarice. I really wanted a card like Jar of Avarice in this deck. I was actually contemplating playing three of it and just bumping the deck up to 42. Um, just because like this card, this card lets you gather back resources that you've used. And this deck is very sort of resource heavy in terms of all the plays that it makes. Um, you can make very simple plays, like very simple one-for-one -one card plays, and if you play smart you can make plus one plays obviously, and then all the things like your Draco Net and your Sangin Link plays are obviously going to be plus ones. Uh, but otherwise, things like Link Slayer and stuff like that, they just eat through your resources. Uh, while it solves problems, it eats through the resources, and so being able to put five cards back into your deck and then draw a fresh card is just a little bit of a resource to like grab back. And honestly, I would probably actually put this card to three and play 42. Even though it is a trap, it's it's definitely a very strong recovery option. Same thing with Call the Haunted, though. Call the Haunted is fantastic in this deck for the fact that you can like you can combo so many different ways with it, like using Call the Haunted on Sangin and then summoning Ram Clouder and then using Ram Clouder to tribute Sangin to summon like a Link Monster or another Cybers from Grave and getting a Search. Or you can do that in the opposite order of Ram Clouders in your Grave and Sangins in your hand. Still do the same play. Uh, Call of the Haunt is just a really strong card in terms of being able to revive your threats that your opponent has dealt with and gotten over. And so that's that's kind of why it's in the deck. But I'm, I'm, I'm warming up more and more the more I talk about it to the idea of just playing 42 with 3 Jar of Avarice in it. But for the extra deck, you're just playing 3 Decode Talker, 3 Honeybot, and three Link Spider. There's no reason not to play three of each one of these bastards, uh, especially Link Spider. This card's actually like really good uh, for this specific deck, and it's really good for any like normal monster deck in general. Um, and actually, side note, I really like how these things came out hollow wise. They actually like look really, really crisp and really good. I like the fact that the hollow is on the Link markers. Uh, like, is I actually really I think these are very well done hollows. And for USA hollows that came out of a starter deck. That's really, really singing it some praise. But so, basically, you're just going to put your, these nine cards in your extra deck because you have the room for them. So there's no reason to be like, I'm going to arbitrarily play two Honeybots. <laughs> nah, you're just going to max out on all of them because if you're able to summon them, you're going to. And if you're not able to summon them because you didn't play all three of each, then you're probably going to be mad about it. So, regardless, 
that has been this budget deck profile this is a $30 deck literally to buy three of the starter decks and you have access to this it is such a strong starting point oh my goodness L L these are such insane cards that are in this deck in terms of quality and then all the cards that are new are cards like Ram Clouder and Link Slayer that just like do amazing things by themselves like a deck a starter deck with mirror force torrential bottomless compulse dark hole mst forbidden lance effect veiler sangin like all of these cards in it and then all the new cards are things like ram clouder that revive cards or things like draco net that allow you to get extra monsters on board and then link slayer that's backer removal like, this is such a comprehensive starter deck and it's such a like good in terms of budget deck orientation it's such a good budget deck so if you're interested in trying it out then definitely feel free to do so it's definitely a very strong starting point in terms of what you can go with from the future but other than that that is going to be it for this video let me know what your guys thoughts are in the comments down below if you want me to do more building on budget things more custom building on budgets where i just take a sum of money and i build a deck the best i can out of it then definitely let me know in the comments down below of suggestions of reasonable suggestions don't be like build building on budget zodiacs or whatever because that's not something that's going to be possible in any spectrum of anyone's lifetime uh, so there's definitely that to consider, but if you want to see more of these building on budget videos, these deck building budget nonsenses, then definitely let me know in the comments down below. And be sure to like the video to show your support. But other than that, like, comment, subscribe, as I have already said. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Links, as always, are in the description to my Facebook fan page, as well as my personal Patreon page. If you want to support the channel directly and help me continue to be able to make these types of videos and the content that is of a good quality and a good enjoyment level for you guys, then definitely go check out the Patreon page if you want to support the channel and support my ability to keep doing these sorts of things and you have my eternal gratitude if that's something you wanted to go check out and consider contributing to but other than that that is it for this video as i've already said thanks for watching as always guys thanks for your time as usual and take care i will see you in the next video